Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Royal Decree 52 of the year 2020 appointing Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa as Under Secretary at the Ministry of Housing. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the Hijri New Year holiday. The circular stipulated that uh, the Kingdom's ministries, agencies and official institutions will be closed on Thursday the 20th of August 2020 corresponding to the 1st of Muharram. His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting. At the beginning of the meeting, the cabinet congratulated His Majesty the King, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the people of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on the advent of the new Hijri year, wishing them many happy returns. The cabinet expressed thanks and appreciation to all citizens and residents who registered for the third COVID-19 clinical vaccine, hailing the large turnout to participate in the experiment, which reflects their awareness and communal keenness on supporting all national efforts to eliminate the virus, as well as their sense of responsibility towards humanity. The cabinet congratulated the UAE on the diplomatic achievements of announcing an agreement to halt the annexation of Palestinian lands by the U.S. and Israel. The cabinet denounced the Iranian threats against the UAE and their dangerous repercussions on regional security, as well as the rejected interference they represent in the internal affairs and sovereignty of the UAE. The cabinet affirmed the kingdom's support to the UAE in all that maintains its security and stability. The cabinet also strongly condemned the terrorist Houthi militia's continuous launch of ballistic missiles targeting civilian objects in Saudi Arabia. The cabinet asserted the kingdom's full solidarity with Saudi Arabia and its support against all that threatens its security and stability. The cabinet also denounced the Turkish violations of Iraqi sovereignty by its bombings in the Sidkan area on the Turkish-Iraqi borders. Following the session, the cabinet secretary general, Dr. Yasser al-Nasr, made the following statement. The cabinet approved the adoption of two organizational structures, the first for government hospitals and the second for primary health care centers. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministry of Finance and National Economy regarding economic indicators that reflected the performance of the economic sectors and activities of the kingdom until July of 2020. The Cabinet approved a draft decision to amend some provisions of the executive regulations of the municipality's law promulgated by decree by law number 35 for the year 2001 to coordinate them with the provisions of decree number 50 of the year 2019 to reorganize municipal affairs at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. The Cabinet approved the plan of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to hold a number of workshops in preparation for the National Action Plan for Human Rights. The Cabinet followed up the progress of work on 91 development projects under implementation at a cost of 413 million dinars in three sectors, roads, sanitation and buildings. The cabinet approved a proposal on allocating housing units for the people of the 3rd District in the Northern Governorate in order to achieve them uh, through the housing projects that were implemented in Budaya, Al Jasra, Hamala and Salman City. The cabinet approved a proposal to suspend uh, studies in public and private schools as a precaution to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, which was achieved uh, through the decisions issued to uh, suspended studies until further notice. The cabinet approved a proposal to remove the health quarantines for coronavirus from residential areas. The cabinet approved a proposal to allow volunteering for doctors and nurses looking for work or retirees and paramedics to combat the coronavirus. The cabinet approved a proposal to provide protective clothing from infection and special masks for doctors and workers in health centers affiliated with the Ministry of Health. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the outgoing commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, U.S. Fifth Fleet and Combined Maritime Forces, Vice Admiral James J. Malloy. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the long-standing ties between Bahrain and the United States, which continue to receive the support of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the importance of further strengthening bilateral cooperation across various fields. His Royal Highness concluded by extending thanks and best wishes to Vice Admiral Malloy for his role in further enhancing bilateral cooperation and coordination, particularly in military cooperation and defense. Regional and international issues of common interest were reviewed. For his part, Vice Admiral Malloy extended gratitude and appreciation for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's support and commitment to further strengthening Bahraini-U.S. relations and wish the Kingdom further prosperity. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, Yasser Shahban. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of bolstering relations and cooperation between Bahrain and Egypt, which reflects the concern of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi. His Highness noted that Bahrain, upon the support of His Majesty the King, is keen on increasing cooperation with Egypt in all fields. He hailed the leading diplomatic role of the ambassador in promoting mutual relations, wishing him continuous success. The ambassador praised the historical bilateral relations and the areas of coordination and cooperation for the benefit of both countries, stressing his country's aspirations towards further cooperation in various fields. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Lebanon's ambassador to Bahrain, Milad Hanna Namur. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is keen to continue to support Lebanese people in every humanitarian aspect in this crisis and to send relief, aid, consignments to help them in the tragedy of the big explosion in Beirut. The meeting also discussed topics of common concern. The ambassador expressed appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his humanitarian directives, praising the efforts made by His Highness Sheikh Nasser to implement them. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated the top three winners of the Strongest Man at Home competition finals, hailing the high performance made by the participants. He commended the outstanding coverage of the Ministry of Information Affairs led by Ali Ramehi through dedicating a program and a studio to broadcast the competition of the finals. He also praised the efforts of the championships organizing committee, which had a vital role in achieving His Highness's goal to continue making successes and promote the kingdom's status in global sports. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force in the General Command Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received outgoing commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, U.S. Fifth Fleet and Combined Maritime Forces Vice Admiral James J. Malloy on the occasion of the end of his term in the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi and uh, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi. During the meeting, the Commander-in-Chief of the BDF thanked the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central command for the kind efforts he had made during his tenure. Praising the existing relations between Bahrain and the United States and the development and growth witnessed by these relations, especially at the military level. Also, a number of topics of common interest were discussed. The meeting was attended by the director of the General Command Bureau, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, BDF Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistics and Supply, Re Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Damalallah, Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations, Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala, and Commander of the Royal Bahrain. Navy Major General PSC Mohammed Yusuf Al Asam and a number of senior officers of the BDF. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Azainal, and President of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, delivered a speech as part of the virtual meeting of the 13th Forum of Women Parliamentarians, which was held by the Inter-Parliamentary Union organized by Austria. Zainal confirmed or affirmed that equality between women and men in Bahrain is based on the principle of equal opportunities as a firm doctrine and a fundamental pillar of the comprehensive reform project by His, Maj His Majesty 
King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She stated that the kingdom has developed plans and strategies and has established institutions and associations concerned with women's issues, particularly the Supreme Council for Women, which is led by Bahrain's First Lady, the wife of His Majesty the King, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. Zainal affirmed the need to find specific initiatives related to practical realities through the parliaments of the world to devote legislative efforts in order to deepen and enhance the global march towards the empowerment and advancement of women in all fields. The Minister of Interior General uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa launched remotely eight new e services. They include 76 interior ministry services for the public as part of the reinforcement of precautionary measures against the coronavirus. The new services were launched in cooperation with the Information and e Government Authority, Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, General Directorate of Traffic, General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science and Customs Affairs. The Interior Minister hailed the directives of his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to invest in modern technology in all sectors to serve the nation and citizens. He valued the follow up of the wise government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for such constructive initiatives that come as part of the dedication of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to develop modern technologies to limit the spread of the coronavirus. He stated that launching the new service is part of the electronic transformation and expansion of the ministry services to achieve performance excellence to provide better services for citizens and translate the strategies and priorities of the government and achieve the sustainable development goals. He expressed thanks and appreciation to all the ministry's directorates that were involved in the launching of the services. The minister asserted that the next phase will witness the development of services of police directorates and centers as part of the continuation of the development plans and utilization of technology in various initiatives and services. He affirmed the importance of enhancing awareness on the benefits of the services that replace the need for personnel attendance and visits to service centers. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, affirmed continuing efforts to achieve positive economic growth for the kingdom by harnessing all capabilities to deal optimally with various developments and circumstances according to the requirements of the current stage and future plans. He noted that the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the decisions of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the orders of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy. Premier bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa had a, a prominent role in handling the repercussions of the coronavirus in a manner that preserves the health and safety of citizens and residents. The minister stated that the financial and economic stimulus package that was launched in record time to support citizens and support the private sector as a result of the repercussions of the coronavirus at a value of more than 4.5 billion Bahrain dinars contributed to supporting the diversification of the kingdom's economic base in a manner that preserves sustainable growth. He added that work continues to face the various challenges and variables with the collaboration of all members of Team Bahrain to move forward in achieving plans and initiatives and strategies aimed at enhancing the strength of the national economy by increasing the rates of contribution of vital sectors in the gross domestic production. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,535, with 322 recoveries and 405 registered new cases and two deaths. 160 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 241 are contacts of active paces, and four are travel-related. The deceased are a 55-year-old citizen and a 42-year-old expatriate. The ministry expresses heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.